All right. So what everyone's always curious about, which is data sources and APIs. We want to be involved in data, whether we're creating solutions for data, we're investing, we're an agent trying to have more informed metrics. But how do we actually get our hands on this data and how do we do it cheaply? So that's what today is all about. So first, starting off, where do you find the data source resources for the course? That's within the classroom in our school community. And then we have top real estate data sources. So under downloadable sources, what that means is that you can go to these websites and automatically be able to get the data. So one of the biggest misunderstandings I see is Zillow has no way to download their data. But in fact, they actually do. They have a research team that posts housing data every single month, and they post information like Zilla Home Value Index, what mortgage payments look like across geographies, home value forecast, which is useful if you're trying to think, okay, if I'm going to buy three months from now, does this area, are prices softening? So do I expect to see a decline or an incline? As well as rental information and more, which I find this really useful because it goes down to the zip code level. So say if you're looking for what market to invest in locally or throughout the nation, these kinds of data sets can help you to narrow down maybe where to invest. But the problem with these data sets is when we actually try to look at them. So if I download one of these, and I'm going to just open it here in Sheets, this resource, this was for single family homes and condos, ZORI, which ZORI stands for the rent index. The data, we have information by region, state, metro, and then we have dates from 2015 to 2025, which this is like, let's see, does it tell us? It's 134 columns, which is really wide. So how do we actually use an LLM to help us? And that's what we're going to jump into in just a moment. So what we've done is, let's take Realtor as an example. If we search Realtor here, you'll see Realtor market data, and we have contact stocks, is information about the data. So where to go get the data, about the data, what actual features are in the data, and then actually what Python uh, scripts do you need to extract that data. Then for apartment list, this is another free resource, they have information about rent data. So if we were to go to apartment list, you'll see the markdown file, which is here. And it's the same exact thing. Basically have a document that says, what is this data, where to go ret retrieve it, and what kind of sources does it have? So my goal is that I want to get insights on the data sources, but I'm lazy. <laughs> And I want to do this in like 10 minutes. So my question is, can we just have an LLM help us create this dashboard ourselves? So I sent a chat to chat GPT and I said, hey, create me a master prompt. I have these files and I want to build an app to basically understand the market data. So I took these two files. I uploaded them to Gemini, which if you weren't in our first session, no worries. Just go to Gemini AI Studio and you'll see Google AI Studio. You need a free Google account. Go to build under apps and I will post this here as well. And the first thing you wanna do is upload text files. So there were two text files in this document. Then copy the prompt, which is basically telling Gemini, hey, you're gonna be a real estate data expert. I already have the two files that have exactly like what type of data I want to get, where to go get it. Almost like telling an intern how to go to the post office and like fill things out for you and then submit your package. Just copy all of it and then paste it in here alongside those text files. So if in five minutes, it built me a little app that says market data with AI. And what's really neat is that Without me having to explicitly tell it, I said, act like a real estate market expert, 
that's an investor friendly and it knew to create this ratio price to rent ratio um this is basically like what gemini put together so i think when i told it to create a prompt it might have put price to rent ratio yep it did and it even had the calculation for it which i didn't have to get so i'm able to see median list price across metros and it looks like i could filter on a metro so let's say i just put tampa It took the latest month apartment list from June 2025, realtor from June 2025, joined it, and is quickly showing to me that Tampa has a year-over-year -year negative price by 5%. The rent across all types of properties is $1,800, which really, I probably want to get the rent from like Zillow because it has the rent at the zip code level. If you were to try to do this without asking Gemini, you would need to wrangle with these spreadsheets um, and it would be kind of cumbersome. You probably have to make pivot tables and things like that. Whereas here, you can just quickly see the insights, start going back and forth and maybe getting more detailed. Like, oh, now I see that these five zip codes have the most rank growth. Can you now pull me data of employment um, employment information, which you could then use our U.S. Census context stock. So I split this up into two parts, which is low-cost APIs and large-scale APIs. This is something you're probably not going to hit until after you have a little project that you've built, and maybe you have some people using it, and then you want to maybe go for a larger API. But these usually do the job for 90% of projects you're working on. So one of the biggest questions that I get is, how do I get Zillow data? That's probably one here. So yeah, you'll have web scraping tools. The problem is they could be inconsistent and the data can be still kind of difficult to read in. Think of it as like just a marketplace. So in this use case, we're gonna see that this company Um, which I'm not affiliated with, they have scrapers going every second on Zillow. So instead of having to create this custom scraper, you could just use their API that already gives you the data in a structured way. And they have a lot of uh, real estate ones too. So this one we're going to go through is the Zillow.com one. Is Think of it as folders, a very structured way to go and grab data. So we see here property details. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? In the parameters, it says you could pass in a ZP ID. So looking at Tampa here, I'm just going to click this property. I see the Zestimate is 268. But how do I just like get all this information on this page like to a spreadsheet? I can paste it in here, and I could test the endpoint. I get back all this data. We see we have a rent Zestimate, 1746. And if we look here, Uh, rent estimate 1746. So it live just scraped the site. And that is the same here. Yep. So those estimates match. So I hear many different use cases, but one of the top ones is enriching leads. So you are, say, a wholesaler, you have a website, and you say, I buy houses, right? So someone will go into your page, they'll put their contact information and maybe, and then their address of where they live. But now you need to look up that address and you need to populate it in your Go High level, Asana, whatever you're using. What you'd be able to do is use a tool like Zapier. Um, if you're not a programmer, if you are a programmer, you can just take this data, copy it, use like Google Collab, which is free, paste it, and then you can have it auto connect to your Google Sheets. But if you weren't a programmer, you can use Zapier. There's plenty more. Um, there's one for real for realtor data, which I know a lot of people like using because they save images past the listing. Rencast is another good one. And you can get information on a property like you could get rest, rent estimate, put it in an address, and get data of the rent high to low, and then all the comparables as well. Beware, like Adam, 
I don't know anyone who's ever like build a prototype off of them because I'm pretty sure their start like really high, but they have information on everything. So ownership, mortgages, property, foreclosures, valuation, and then all this climate related data. But here you can just get a property data for about 12 cents or so. So they have a property lookup. Yeah, we could see all the previous buyers and sellers on that property. And then quick list, which I love. So we could see if the owner is currently absentee, cash buyer, high equity, low equity, tired landlord, et cetera. Webhound, an AI agent that builds data sets from the web. So like half an hour before we jumped on this call, I was like, huh, like I've tried a lot of these and they don't work well. So like, let me see if it can get data from the county website for foreclosures where you can see what properties are going to be foreclosed on. April 1st, you could try to make a deal with the owner um, prior to this. But I said, I want a list of foreclosure properties and I want them to be for Aug the month of August and I want them to be for Hillsborough County in Florida. But it did a pretty good job. It actually got a bunch of case numbers. So if we go to here, we could see that there's case numbers and it got the property address, it got the sale date, the sale time, the opening bid, and then the plaintiff, which if I want to basically integrate what I've shown you today, I could have this auto save to a spreadsheet, use Zillow, then um, put this through Zapier and like automatically have a workflow where for each foreclosure, I'm getting all the information on a property. Feel free to ask any more questions you have, but this is not like the only place to ask questions. I want to scrape a certain website, but don't know how. Feel free to throw that in the community post. I'll try to get to it as soon as possible. I covered a lot, so don't be worried if it's kind of like some things went over your head. It can be a lot to see all this data at once, but I'm really excited to see like what you may take from this data, what you may end up building, and how it can help you in your journey with real estate.